Awesome. All right, let's queue up. I know. Uh, Tom Kelly and Matt Burrows from Monster <clears throat> Energy. So this is a neat session. I like this one because this upcoming session is called the reality of ROI. And ROI means return on investment. That means that when a company is looking at the numbers, they're looking at the, their expenses as investments in potentially making money. Um, they're investing in you to race. They're not expensing the racing, they're investing in it because they, they expect a return out of it. So how do you measure return on investment? Is it more customers? I've, is it more product sales? Uh, I've heard everything from, from brand managers in the past. Oh, I need 3X on my ROI. I need 4X. I need 5X. I need five times return of my investment. If I invest $1, I need to make $5 back. And I've also heard, well, you know, we calculate ROI by licking our finger and sticking it in the wind and seeing which way the wind's blowing. So ROI is a very evasive, interesting topic. Small companies tend to know if their marketing works because the owner or CEO or the founder of a small company, he knows what moves the needle. They see on a daily basis if they're selling. When you get to bigger companies with thousands of employees and hundreds of departments, it's a lot harder to gauge what's moving the needle and where the results are actually coming from. So if you take a company like Monster Energy, I think Monster Energy was in the paper, I've seen it a couple of times now, is the most successful stock on the exchange, on its, its exchange, I should say, with a 115,000% return in terms of its um, stock price growth. So, boy, how do you calculate that? Is it because the marketing is working well? Is it because the teams that Monster sponsors do a good job? Is it because the salespeople are getting new distribution channels? I don't know. But you know what? We're going to ask a couple guys from Monster today, one who races and one who's been with the company since the very beginning. So Tom Kelly is the CFO of Monster Energy, and Matt Burroughs is the Senior Vice President of Corporate Finance. What's really cool is that Tom and I worked together in the 1980s before Monster was Monster. Monster was Hanson's back then, and Tom was my boss. He was actually a really cool boss, I have to say. Cool guy. And even more cool, Matt Burroughs, he races. He races for Can-Am, the factory team. Number, what number is it? 298, is it 2498 or 2948, Matt? I know you race uh, Pro UTV 20, Turbo for Can-Am. Yeah, yeah. 2948 in score. Okay. 2948. And, and, before, and before Alex takes all of my opening, I'm going to cut you off right there, Alex, and, uh, <laughs> and, and take it from here. Do you have anything right. else, Alex? Yeah, tell I was us, gonna tell us what ROI thing. is, Tom. What the heck is ROI? Is, is no, there such I'm not a thing? I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start a little bit before that and tell a little storytelling first. Okay. Uh, I know you only have a half, a half hour. Um, but yes, I'd like to be able to acknowledge my uh, colleague, uh, Matt Burroughs, uh, who's you announced him as uh, the senior VP of corporate finance. Uh, one day soon to be CFO as well. So right. at Monster. And, and, and so, also he's a two-time overall UTV I, I, no, no, That's no, more important no, no. there. Hey, hey, Alex, Alex, <laughs> you asked me to come on and then you take my whole speech. All right, all right, all right. go ahead. You got uh, it wrong yesterday. That's what I'm saying. No, but uh, but thank you, Alex. And thank you uh, all the audience for being here and participating. And Alex was correct. I think it was in 1988 uh, that I first met Alex. He was a college kid. He was uh, doing the backup tapes at what was then the Hanson Company. He used to work in the computer room and he was just as energetic there uh, then as he is now. So uh, it's been great knowing Alex for all these years. He actually has asked me to come on this session of a few different times. And I've always said, uh, Alex, I'm buried in finance. I don't know anything about marketing. Um, is that technical okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, good. good. Uh, and, and so, and so fortunately, I brought together my colleague, Matt, who is going to, uh, you know, help me with the marketing end of a business as far as the financial end. But before we get into and in started on that, I did want to say that Monsters enjoyed a lot of different sponsors uh, over the years. Uh, we, we have sponsored a lot of different athletes and a lot of different events. Uh, and I'd like to make uh, just a, se a separate tribute for, uh, to some of the past athletes uh, that w work for Monster, such as uh, Ken Block, uh, Pat Casey, Rick Hewson, uh, and Sarah Burke. Uh, those were Monster employees that are no longer here. And, you know, you could, they've had unfortunate accidents along their journeys. And so I wanted to just acknowledge mm -hmm. them. Um, the, 
the um, I, I like the I got to acknowledge what Cam and Courtney has says prior to me. I, they, Cam, I believe that you said, you know, when you got it, you've got it. I think that was the term that you used. And I got to say that that's how Monster's beginnings of sponsorships took place. Uh, back in 2002, when Monster was first created, uh, we had a very, very grassroots marketing. We didn't want to go to radio or TV. We thought that that was too mainstream. We wanted to appeal to the younger generation at that time. And I don't know what generation Z or X or what letter that was during that time. Maybe it was the millennials. But uh, at, that, at that time, we did a lot of uh, crazy uh, things. For instance, we would go to these events and races we wouldn't sponsor anybody, but we would wait for the winner to win the race. And then once that winner won, that's when we go over there with the monster banners and put the cap on the uh, winner and put the banner on and do all the photo shoots as though we were sponsoring. So maybe it was a little just disingenuous at the time, but those were the type of grassroots marketing uh, that we had at the time. Joe Parsons uh, said that he went with pockets full of cash to different events and right yeah. as somebody won an event he'd say hey i'll give you 500 bucks if you put on our hat he would trade yeah. them that was really that's really brilliant actually tom brilliant way to yeah. market and, and and those were the days where there wasn't a lot of attention uh, i don't even think red bull had a big budget when it comes to the sports because we're talking about energy drinks now and it was it was us against the red bull it was something that was not traditional advertising and so these are the kind of mechanisms that we use to get our name out there. And we did get that grassroots following. And from there, we uh, you know, sponsored a lot of uh, smaller events, uh, the skateboarding, the bikes, the mountain biking, those types of events. And then that graduated to different uh, types of events that we would get into. Um, another one that comes to mind is, speaking of kind of crazy uh, marketing approaches is, uh, uh, if you remember in 2015, there was the horse American Pharaoh. The Triple it Crown. The first yeah. two legs of the Triple Crown. And the third leg was coming up. And they approached us and they said, listen, we have a good chance of winning the Triple Crown. Do you want to be a sponsor? And there was some negotiations three or four days before that race took place. Uh, we American Pharaoh won the race. We did do the sponsorships with them. Uh we got a lot of what Mark Hall refers to as a lot of eyeballs. Did it have a return on investment? Well, it's hard to measure, but if you looked at the film clips back then, all the winning circles, the family that crowded around the horse at that time after it's won, uh, had uh, monster hats on. So it, it did get a lot of attention. Um, so, f and from those early beginnings, you know, Mal Monster is in. Uh, UFC. Uh, we sponsored uh, Conor McGregor. We're in Formula uh, One, MotoGP. We've got sponsors such as Lewis Hamilton, mm -hmm. Valentino Rossi, uh, and it goes. The list goes on and on to uh, Chloe Kim, NASCAR. Um, one of the advices that I like, what I believe Courtney says, is get yourself out there, market yourself, go to these events, make yourself approachable to the people that uh, are at these events from different companies that are looking for new people to sponsor. Uh, one story that just came through recently, the, uh, Philippe uh, Toledo, Toledo, and I'm not sure if I've got that right. He just won the world title in surfing just recently. Mm -hmm. He approached us prior to doing that. So we didn't know it. And uh, the marketing department, I don't know what kind of evaluation that they did, but uh, they took it upon themselves to, to sponsor this person. And uh, that person won the, uh, won the world title. And from that, Monster got a lot of name rec recognition that's out there. So uh, that just gives you some ideas. What Courtney said earlier is that you've got to network yourself. You've got to go out there. And, and uh, again, it's that self-esteem that companies are looking for. Uh, Obviously, if you're winning events in your field, uh, that is a big indicator that we would like to have an association uh, with them. Um, and instead of going through the rest of the laundry list of all the other things that Monster's involved with, uh, I'd just like to, let's see. Um, 
you know, Monster spends, you know, millions and millions of dollars in how to allocate its budget. And it allocates its budget by, you know, giving uh, certain amounts to Tiger Woods. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, the NASCAR, we've got our own super cross races, the X Games. Uh, if I asked I you how much you spent on motorsports, would you tell me? Out there. Sorry. Uh, if I asked how many millions you spend on motorsports, would you answer? I he would not. He would not. I would not. I don't want to report for that. What's uh, published uh, publicly? So, uh, yeah. so uh, I, I think that the advice that I the tried. previous uh, presenters uh, gave us. Now, Alex uh, came to me a couple of times, and he says, "Well, what's the ROI, the return on investment?" You know, it's a very hard indicator. It's hard to measure what that is. When you're out there spending millions of dollars, and I'm talking about uh, even things that Monster doesn't get involved with, such as, say, Super Bowl. I, I don't know how they measure. Certainly, everybody likes the cute ads, but to get uh, a feedback of how many impressions that was taken during those Super Bowl ads, I don't know what that, uh, how that is measured by other companies. We don't do it in finance. What does uh, occur in finance is we can see the result. We can see increased sales. Certainly, if there's an event like motocross or, uh, say, a NASCAR race that's going on in a locality, you might go into a 7-Eleven or a mobile convenience store, and you'll see some posters that we would sponsor events that way. So that's how our marketing dollars are directed. But I know the audience wants to hear is, well, how could I approach uh, somebody? How could I uh, get into? And there, and I'm not going to uh, give out any names on this call because I'll have a lot of uh, irate uh, colleagues of mine, but gets to know who are those decision makers at Monster? Uh, who is the event? We have the events broken up into uh, off-road events, uh, bike events, surfboard events, skate events. And we have managers for each one of those events. See if you can't get those names and approach those persons if those are the persons that's in your area. So uh, that would be my advice on that. Now, I've, I've uh, from a finance view, again, but the best I can say is return on investment, we don't measure it. We just know what it is. Again, what Cam says, you just know when you have it, you know the results. If something's popular, it's like the, recently it's Taylor Swift. She's the talk of the town now with football. Well, she's a pretty high brand name, and no matter what she does, she's going to get uh, recognition out there. Uh, how that is for a newcomer, I don't know. Uh, one more thing I'll add is social media, something that wasn't around 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, followers on Instagram, followers on the Facebook, those are the important things. If there's a lot of followers, then it's certainly easy for us to have a relationship and a partnership uh, with them. But so that's for, for the finance. I know with my limited amount of time, I really wanted to uh, partner up with my colleague. And just to give you an idea of who I'm introducing you to, not only has he been a great uh, person to work with and helping me tremendously in the finance area at Monster, uh, a very smart uh, individual. Uh, he's during 1999 to 2005, he was a motorcycle rider. Uh, he uh, was writing under the banner of uh, Factory Hus Garvana, if I pronounced that correctly. Escobarna, yep. Escobarna. Uh, more recently, though, in 2020, he was the SCORE Baja 500 champion. Matt talked about uh, you know, the SCORE uh, racing circuit earlier. Uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of races that you have to attend to uh, actually come for, you know, be the winner. So he won that single event. And then in 2022, he won the overall score Baja UTV. Uh, so that's the combination of all the races that took place in 2022. Uh, you know, he won that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, my good colleague, uh, Matt Burroughs to you. And Matt can fill you in since he is a racer, since he is going on knocking on doors to companies to get sponsorships. I'll leave it to Matt to take it over. <laughs> Well, that was great. Thank you, Tom. That was awesome. Thanks, How are you? Thanks, Tom. I'm That's good. How are you? in the background there. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. What, real quick, what is your next event? Uh, the Baja 1000. So right we, are, we are. That would be awesome. Yeah, it's 1,308 miles. So we are trying to get ready for that long pole this year. That's all right. And I know I'm invading. Oh, go ahead, Tom. I know I'm invading on your time a little bit, Matt, but 
Matt, that vehicle that you see behind him, it's a beautiful vehicle, but it gets broken down and rebuilt almost every, I don't know, Matt, what, every other race? No, every we race. Every, every race is a full prep. So Yeah, so you race. take off all the tires, all the springs, all everything. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'll let you go from there. All right, so Alex, I want to clean, clear up one or clean up one statement you made because I'm a finance guy. So uh, over the last 25 years, Monster is the number one stock for returns. Better than Amazon, better than Google, better than Facebook, better than all of them. So um, over the last 25 years. So anyway, clean that up years. from a finance okay. perspective. Yes, um, and you know what? Because the article said of the century. So that yeah. would make sense. Not not in a century, but of the century. Okay, yes, that would make yes, sense. Yes, the yes. best performing stock of the century, Monster Energy. Well, yes. congratulations, everybody at Monster. Hey, so so Matt, when it comes to and and I've had Dave Galland on, we've had Joe Parsons on, we've had uh, a lot of people on from Monster, and, and everybody sort of has a different perspective. But since you are in finance and you understand marketing, and you also race, and you're a champion in the UTV class. What is it that Monster looks for when selecting new athletes? We have a lot of racers on the call who probably want to be sponsored by Monster or a company like Monster. What advice do you have to them uh, for getting sponsored by an energy drink or a big company with a lot of money? You know, I, I, I think the first thing, you know, before you kind of go after a Monster sponsorship, which, you know, I would consider, you know, a, a definitely a, a big company and A-level sponsorship, is you need to get out there and get some results. Um, you know, that things are changing a bit and there's the influencer side and the social media side, but, you know, our roots are, are, are still there for, for you know, championships and, and winning drivers and, and, um, you know, speaking specifically in off road, you know, so spend the time, go out and get the results. Uh, you know, it's, I, I think it's unrealistic to go to a company like Monster and say, look, sponsor me, but you've really had no results. And it doesn't mean that, you know, we have a program, we have the Monster Ar Army program that invests in, um, you know, kind of up and coming riders. And that's a place definitely to start with Monster. But to really get a good, you know, kind of an A-level sponsorship for Monster, you need to go out and have some success. Uh, not only success, your program needs to look like a professional program. I think, you know, those are kind of the two mistakes that I that I see people make oftentimes is one, they're not out there getting the results that they need to get, and two, their program isn't from a, from an outside perspective isn't a professional looking program. And what Tom was saying is it's a self-esteem that the company looks for. So there's an attitude and a personality and perhaps a culture that you need to fit in when you approach a brand. The culture of, let's say, Budweiser beer is going to be different from the culture of Monster Energy. Can you talk a minute for about the what, what Monster looks for when, when it seeks athletes with self-esteem so it matches the culture of the brand? Yeah, I mean, we're looking for, you know, one that we're looking for winners that's that's really the you know the uh, a big thing that's monster is looking for but we're looking for um you know people that will be good ambassadors uh of the brand somebody that you know we were comfortable bringing to an event that monster might have and let's talk the sand sport super show for instance you know we're looking for people that can go to an event like that and really have a presence and represent Monster well in an event like that. And, and then you're in finance, so you understand the numbers. And Tom was talking in general ROI. In most large companies, it's very difficult to calculate what actually moves that needle. But are there metrics that do help if a young driver is looking to impress Monster? Are there are certain metrics that are more important to the brand than others that you suggest maybe people focus on? Yeah, it, you know, again, hard for me to say because I'm not in the in the marketing department. But for me and what you know, my my role and I help I help out a little bit on the off road side was just you know a set of eyes and ears out there, um, and it's really presence. It's really you know if I go to an off road race, what is it, and it doesn't come down. You don't need to have a lot of money, and that's not where I'm going with this, but what is your presence like? What does your chase truck look like? Is your chase truck wrapped? If you are a monster sponsor, where does the monster logo? Is it placed right? Is it clean? Do you have a clean looking race suit? How does your helmet look? You know, do you have an easy up? If we've given you easy ups, you know, are they there? Are they branding? So it's all little, all those little things, 
you know, are extremely important to Monster. And those are things that at events with racers, we're, we are looking at to make sure that, that we're getting, the, you know, our ORI on that specific race for them, that specific um, driver, have they performed, you know, up to our expectations? And, and that, that actually makes a lot of sense. I, I think that would apply to most um, strong brands. So Tommy, if I could ask, with, could, if I could ahead, ask, just about in. Uh, sorry, Alex, I know you're doing the interview, but I, I wanted to turn the attention back to Matt's car because uh, you've got, uh, you don't have to name them, but how many sponsors do you have on that car and how did you approach each one? I think that you told me before, Matt, that you've got somebody that does the tires, the oils, the springs. Yeah. Uh, and how do you go about knocking on the door and saying, listen, I'm going to be a UTV racer. This is what I need. Yeah, and it's, you know, it, it, a good question. I think one of the mistakes that a lot of, from what I hear, a lot of mistakes that prospective athletes make is they go to the company, they approach the company and saying, I want this, I want that. I want 10 tires, I want whatever. And, and a different approach is when I approach a company, it's here's what I can do for you here's as a racer, I'm going to be able to do X, Y, and Z. And here's the things I guarantee I'm going to do. I'm going to be at the races. I'm going to be well-branded. We may not win, but we're, you know, over time, hopefully you're going to be um, successful. And, you know, the tire sponsor is, is a great example. It's um, I'm, you know, been with system three tires for, for quite a long time. And if you're looking at ROI for them, um, we were able to give them, you know, the Baja championships that you spoke of. So they're able to use that in their marketing of their tires are Baja champions in, in the UTV area. Um, number two is system three has put up large banners um, throughout dealerships uh, across the nation of my car um, system three, big system three logo monster gets to be on there as well. But if you look at, Chaparral Motorsports, which is one of the biggest dealers um, in the nation, happens to be right here. There is an enormous banner on the window um, of us from a race. So I really approached each one of those um, to say, here's what I can do for you. The conversation about what I need from them is, is you know, that's just many times well down the road. It's here's what I can do for you. I can present this to you. Um, on the monster side, what, what's been a perk for my other sponsors is I made it to the gas station wrap. Um, oh, nice. So I congratulations on, on that. That's big, uh, actually. And and I didn't even know until people were sending me text saying, "Hey, I was, um, I got one. He was in the middle of Minnesota somewhere. He takes a picture inside the store above the cooler, and there's a picture of our car. Nice. So those are those are the things that I try to show that I can do." One of the, I, I, I think Mark from IBOC, I, I think he's joining later, but that picture at, um, that big picture at Chaparral, there's an enormous IBOC sticker right there um, on the front of the car. So these are the things I like to present to sponsors with to say, this is what I can do for you. You know, Excellent. I don't, I, I don't have the, the biggest social media following. Um, it's just, you know, part of my, it's a weak part of my game, although we're trying to get better. But I really try to give the sponsors, you know, idea of here's what I can do. Um, I think I, I think one other mistake that I hear that many racers make is they say they're going to do X, Y, and Z, and they don't do it. Whether that's I'm going to race this series, um, I'm going to be at this event with my car. They make promises and then they don't deliver. If you tell a sponsor you're going to race a series, you need to race that series. That makes sense. Well, I have a question for both of you, and we have two minutes, so either one of you can answer it. But we'll, let's go back to the finance part real quick. Is Explain to the racers on the call and those of us who don't quite get it, how does the budgeting process work? What's the fiscal year? When is the fiscal year? When are budgets made? Does marketing, the marketing department give you a request for how much they're going to get that year? Or do you determine the profits of the company and allocate it to marketing and say, okay, this is what you have to spend? How exactly does that work from the top end down? Well, I, you know, there's years ago, there was an established amount. And it seems that that it continues to grow with the expected growth of the sales uh, of the company. So if uh, we expect 
to grow five or ten percent next year, then that person mm -hmm. uh, will be increase that budget. And it's a, a bottoms up. So the person who is a chief marketing officer, you know, he's got a staff. And as I mentioned before, those individuals are heads of certain departments off road, uh, the BMX or the bikes or the skateboards. And so he'll meet with those and those individuals will uh, say, this is what we would like to have for next year. That all gets put together. It's compared to the prior year spend. And if it's in reason, then it just gets approved. Uh, obviously, there are certain things that are ongoing. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, some of the, you know, the Tiger Woods, he'll get his, uh, you know, uh, allocated his contract each year. Um, the Supercross, the PBRs, uh, the UFCs, all those have a dedicated amount. But there is a big chunk where it's left for, I, I would say, Matt, where well, there's uh, over 100 uh, different uh, individuals that we sponsor uh, on, a, on a smaller level. And yeah. that's the group I think that people would like to get into and say, well, I, I'm not going to compete with the bigger budget piece, but there's enough money in that one pool where there's a lot of am amounts that are going to be dispersed to smaller individuals, somebody who are on the up and coming uh, of that. So, yeah. And I think our, our typically our pattern is, you know, most of the sponsorships start kind of late summer, August, September. That's where most of the conversations happen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think another thing, Alex, that's important is um, really try to for, forge a personal relationship with your sponsors. Don't do it just via email. Pick up the phone and call. Have video, have video chats. Really develop a relationship, and don't don't look to your sponsor relationship. Okay, if you get told no by a company, don't give up and continue with that relationship because you don't know. On the flip side, when you have a sponsorship, um, when you have a sponsorship, don't don't automatically think you're going to have that forever. Continue to foster that relationship. Call them, email them, get on video calls, you know, keep that open line of communication so they know that you still view them as important. And that's a really good point. In fact, that's a great segue to a future session, which we're going to have is keeping sponsors long-term for 20 and 30 years. So Tom, Matt, thank you very much for that insight. That was awesome. Thank you for taking the time on a work day, Wednesday. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Everything no, on great, the call here. Great seeing you, Alex. Thank you, Matt, words. as well. And thanks, thanks to all Tom. the other panelists and uh, uh, participants on the call. Thanks. So, Tom, you did great, thanks. and you were very prepared. Tammy and I want to take you and Kathy out to a winery next week. So I'm going to give you a call. Thank you for being prepared. That was awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. You great. <laughs> so now let's queue up um, the factory team from Polaris. Polaris Factory Racing. We have Ryan Thomas, Travis Clark, and Jeff.